Hi everyone, my name is Carmen from New Leaf Designs and in this video I'm going to show you how to knit a border around the Colorwork Sampler Blanket which has 80 squares in total. Now I've got a little sample swatch here of just four squares and this is the border that we're going to knit around it. It is a nice moss stitch border, not too wide. I didn't want it to subtract from the design of the blanket. You can see how it goes around a corner here. I'm going to show you all of that. The ribbon pattern for the border is included in the blanket pattern. If you bought the blanket pattern before and you don't see the border pattern yet, take a look at the uh, Ravelry site or where you purchased it and you will be able to download a new version of it which will include the border uh, pattern. We are going to start with our border yarn and we are starting in one of the corners so it doesn't really matter which corner you pick but it is easiest let me show you it is easiest to start in a corner where afterwards you get to work in either the top edge of your blanket or the bottom edge of your blanket because those stitches that you need to pick up they will be clearer than on the side on the side you'll have one kind of straight vertical line and then one diagonal line and then another straight one so it's it's a little bit more tricky to see where to pick up stitches i have very short knitting needles this is actually just one dpn cut in half and i sanded the tips and i glued a little bead on it um, you can you can totally use whichever type of needle you want, but um, I wanted to go for a short one to make it more manageable. The first thing that we want to do is determine which corner you're going to work on, and then to just go through the corner with one of your needles. So, and really that is just picking up both loops of that stitch on the corner. It doesn't really matter if it's exactly a stitch or if it's one loop or, you know, as long as you go through it. You then take your yarn and you leave about 15 centimeters uh, which is about six inches. You wrap it around. I do that like, like this. And then I pick up that loop through the blanket corner. This is our first stitch. I'm going to hold that needle in my left hand. And we are doing the knitted cast on which you might have done before. So with my other needle, I'm inserting into the stitch and I'm wrapping the yarn around as if I'm going to knit this stitch. But now, instead of sliding the loop off of that needle, I'm keeping that on and I'm putting this loop on that needle as well. So now I have two stitches. Now from the next stitch onwards, you can either go through this stitch or between the stitches, which I always do uh, with the knitted cast on, as I think it gives a sturdier edge. So I pull up another loop and I put it on. Then I insert in between these stitches again, wrap around, 
pull up a loop, put it on the left hand needle, and one more time. So we have five stitches. See? Okay. Now this loop where it's attached to the blanket, it may pull a little bit large just because there's our thread end here. So pull it tighter whenever you feel like you need to. Now we're going to look at row one of the pattern. So it says row one, right side. We're on the right side. Slip one knitwise. That means we insert into the first stitch as if to knit and then we slide it off. Then knit one. And at this point it might look a little bit weird. The first stitch might kind of slant around the second stitch. That is fine. Then we purl one. And we knit one. And now comes the most difficult part, which is not that difficult, but you just need to pay attention. So I'm going to read the pattern to you first. Um, you now have one stitch left on your left hand needle. Lay this last stitch flat against the edge of the blanket. With your left hand needle, pick up a stitch at the edge of the blanket here. With your right hand needle, insert into both loops as if to knit and knit together as one stitch. Okay, now what does that mean? It's a little bit uh, difficult to see with the very first stitch. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick up this loop of the edge of the blanket that is closest to where I am, right? And that is one of the loops of the blanket cast off. So I'm going to go through there. Then I'm going to go through both loops with my right hand needle and knit them together. I'm going to tug on this beginning a little bit there. Okay, this will become clearer on the next right side. So now we are turning to the wrong side and we look at row two. We slip one purl wise, so that means I'm going to keep the yarn in front and slip this one stitch as if to purl. Then knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And turn work. Okay. Okay. So row three. Slip one knit wise. Knit one. Purl one. Knit one. And now we have one stitch left and we want to pick up one stitch at the edge of the blanket and knit it together with this one. So I'm laying the stitch flat and kind of where it hits the edge that's where I want to pick up one extra loop. And then I knit that together. 
We're going to do this a couple more times and then hopefully it will be a little bit more clear. So wrong side, slip one pearl wise, then nib one, pearl one, knit one, pearl one. Turn your work to the right side, slip one knitwise, knit one, purl one, knit one, and then we get to use up one more stitch of the edge. So just gonna use the next loop of my blanket knit it together. You know, you might have to skip a loop every once in a while to make sure that the border does not go wavy. And just to let you know, this is what it looks like when you're picking up too many loops and when you need to skip a few more. Because as you see, the point of the corner is being pushed outwards which means that I've got too much width here, which is being caused by picking up too many loops and knitting a row for each of those. Um, if I try to smooth this corner out, you will see that this starts to wave. And if you, if you just smooth it out and if you don't look at the corner, it, it will look like it is just completely straight, which might be, uh, which makes it difficult to see whether you're picking up too many um, loops or not. But I thought that showing you this might make it easier to notice. I'm gonna show you a couple more times. So on the wrong side, we slip one pearl wise, and then we knit one, pearl one, knit one, pearl one. And then on the right side, slip one knit wise, knit one, Pearl one, knit one, and then with your left hand needle, see I'm spreading it out a little bit more. This is the stitch that we used the previous right side row, and here is the next one. So I'm going through that. and knitting it together. And that is how you knit this blanket edge. Um, now I'm going to show you how it looks when you've got a little bit more. Here you can see it creates a nice little almost braided effect on the blanket edge. And then. Um, underneath that braid you see the color of the blanket peeking through. That's what you see here as well. And there. And then the edge of the blanket has this really nice braided effect as well and that is because we are slipping the first stitch of the needle. When you get to a transition from one blanket square to the next, you want to skip a few stitches. So you don't want the border to be wavy. So you might just want to pick up this stitch, right? And there is another one in, in the seam here but I think this might be the last stitch I want to pick up and then 
pick up this one next so that it's kind of closing it in a little bit more. But now I want to show you what to do when you get to a corner. So I've just unraveled this bit so I can so I can show you again. So in I'm on the right side now and for the for this right side I'm going to be using the corner here. So I'm I'm reaching a corner. Um, so again, oh, let me do English style. So I'm slipping knitwise. Knit one, purl one, knit one. And then I'm picking up a stitch at the corner and knitting that. And when do you know when you're at a corner? Well, for me, it's just when, when I look at the square and there's really not a stitch, you know, above this. The, the stitch that I would pick up next is, it kind of belongs to this edge, right? So I would be going sideways. Before I do that, I want to knit upwards. So let me just give you a little visual representation of what we're going to do. We have the blanket corner here. I have my blanket edge. And we are now going to knit a couple more rows so that this sticks out, right? We are going to knit that. And then we're going to bind off some stitches here. And then we're gonna turn. We will still have one stitch left over here. We're gonna pick up more stitches here along that edge and then continue with our edge here okay just a little visual representation and now we're going to knit this little piece in simple steps so we're going to knit five more rows we're starting starting with a wrong side row and that is slip one purl wise and then our knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And I really urge you to make a note of the rows you're doing because I always lose count and it, I don't find it easy to see on my work how many rows I've done. So then the right side row, which is a little different than a normal right side row. We slip one knitwise. Oh, sorry. Let's <laughs> I keep switching to continental style because that is my usual knitting method. Uh, so knit one, purl one, and then also knit one, purl one. Nice and easy. Turn your work. Oh, I need to write that down. Right side. Slip one, purl wise. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Okay, I'm just noting this off screen now. Three rows down. Slip one knitwise, 
knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And that was row four. Turn work. Slip one purl wise. Knit one. Purl one. Knit one. Purl one. Right. So what we have now is the little extra strip of knitting, right? We have that little corner there. Okay, stay with me. We bind off in pattern. We slip one knitwise knit one, we bind off one stitch, oh, you might have noticed that before I did that, I did a little wiggle with my needle, that's to give the stitches a little bit more length so that my bind off is stretchier. So I bind off by pulling the rightmost stitch over the one next to it, then purl one, and here comes a little, a little wiggle there. Bind one off, knit one, wiggle, bind off, and purl one. And bind that one off. Oops. Okay. I'm going to slide it on the middle of the needle and do some more wiggling and pulling. There. Doesn't that look nice? Okay. So we have one stitch left, which is almost always the case on a bind off row, but now we are not going to snip the thread and pull it through unless you want to use a different color here, which could give a nice effect, but we are going to continue with the same color. What we want to do is pick up three stitches here. Um, we have one stitch here. And pick up three stitches here, which means we'll have four, and then we'll pick up one in that loop there. Um, so we'll have five. See that we have these two knots here, and that in between we have horizontal bars. Since we need three, and we have one, two, three horizontal bars, I might just use those. So I'm just picking this one up like this, and then you could knit it through the left leg, but I'm just going to go easy and knit through the right leg. Then again, picking up here, Two, and then three, there. Now if you find that these holes, see, those, if you find them a bit too big, then you can pick up stitches in between or you can Let me show you an alternative. I picked up this one. You can also knit that like that. Where's my yarn? Oh. 
because then it kind of makes that tighter. Okay, we have four stitches now, we need five. So let me just quickly read the pattern. Yeah, then pick up one stitch from the blanket edge to high five stitches in total. And there's a tip, pick up that one stitch of the blanket edge within the loop of the last knit two together. So the braided edge continues. Because if you were to just, you know, pick up a stitch here, then this braided edge would not, it would have a little break in it. So I insert in there. Wait, how do I do this? Maybe I'll just use my right hand needle. I insert in there, I wrap around, and then pick up. I'll, I'll do that one more time. Our right hand needle goes into that loop and out through the back, wrap around, and pick up. And now you have five stitches again. And now we can resume in our pattern starting from the wrong side. So that's a row two. So that is slipping pearlwise. Knit one, pearl one, knit one, pearl one. Turning our work, we're on the right side. Slipping knitwise. Knit one, purl one, knit one, and then this one, we pick up a loop, oh, which one should we pick? And this one, oh, that's a little tight. Let's see. Oh. oh, this one. Okay. So, this one. And we knit it together. Same as we've done before. And you'll see that the braided edge turns a corner and then continues. Right. And say you come to the very, very last bit, right? So we are knitting our border up to here. You are using this last loop to pick up and knit together. And then you also knit five rows. So you have this little corner and then you can sew that little edge together with this edge and you'll have one piece of yarn here but you also have the, the yarn from where you bind off so that you can sew it together and that is how you knit your blanket edge Thank you very much for following this tutorial for the blanket edge. If you like this tutorial, please do have a look at my other patterns and tutorials. Um, I'd love to see you there as well. And for now, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.